Hi, I'm KS Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Nerdwood Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the comic creator of the World's Away sci-fi fantasy comic series, Damian Becton, here to promote the Kickstarter for the comic second issue. Welcome, Damian. Hey there. How are you guys? Well, we're all right, and thank you for joining us today. But um, outside my introduction, who is Damian Becton in his own words for new listeners? Um, <laughs> Damian Becton, um, I am a... First and foremost, I am a teacher. Well, actually, shout out to me. I'm giving myself a shout out early. <laughs> uh, I just got, I got a promotion. I, like, I, I'm still teaching. I'm still a sixth grade teacher, but I recently got promoted to be a school admin, a, six, a middle school ad, administrator. So I'm Congratulations. I uh, appreciate that. I am, I'm not too nervous about it, but it's, um, it's, it's going to be interesting. But I'm a teacher. Um, I'm a son. I'm a, I'm a comic book writer. Um, I'm a comic book nerd. I do um, basketball head. I, I'm just a normal dude, um, but I just love uh, writing stories. I love um, creating comics, something that I've always wanted to do. And I um, finally ended up pursuing it last year. Um, last year, when I uh, shout out to Mad Cave Studios, um, I won the Mad Cave Studio. I was one of the four winning writers for Mad Cave Studios talent, annual talent search. So I kind of told myself, um, if this is going to happen, then, you know, now's the time that it's going to happen. So shout out to mm-hmm. Matt shout out to Brian Hawkins, shout out to Jared Lujan. I think you um, interviewed Jared Lujan before. Yeah. Um, but he's a good dude, too. He's um, He's been helpful. Um, but yeah, that, in a nutshell, just a normal dude trying to create stories. Well, um, this story, World's Away, um, what is it about for... Um, new readers and what should they we should returning readers expect for the second issue um for worlds away it's very much inspired by um, a lot of video games and a lot of the comic books that i read growing up specifically video games like final fantasy i don't know if you guys ever played any of the final fantasy games yeah Um, so i was born in 91 so one of the biggest games that i've or my most influential games in my life was Final Fantasy VII. A lot of the stuff that um, I write either directly or indirectly is inspired by Final Fantasy VII. Um, some other games that inspired it. Um, this really started off as a, um, Worlds Away started off as a, um, I got the idea from playing The Last of Us, but it kind of morphed into um, this huge, well, I wouldn't say huge, but this sci-fi fantasy type story. And I say The Last of Us because um, it was a, a father and a kind of a daughter um, story. And that kind of evolved into um, the main character, Serenity in World's Away, and the other main character, um, Mackenzie, the daughter. Um, it, they were kind of um, metaphors for my, for my mom and my sister, um, but kind of me as well. Um, but it's this huge um, action-packed, Hopefully emotional. Hopefully, you'll, hopefully it'll be painful. Um, <laughs> um, action story where magic meets um, sci-fi, laser beams versus spells, um, plasma blades, bullets versus dragons, things like that. Um, I like to mash up. That's why I say Final Fantasy a lot. Um, it's because Final Fantasy ha- is this huge, um, huge stories that that mix laser beams with dragons and skeletons and knights versus aliens and all these things so that's where a lot of my um inspiration comes from uh and so what should readers expect i guess returning readers should expect and for the second issue oh yeah um so if you did read it shout out to you um if you did read the last issue um there was some action at the end there was a lot of i kind of i guess i set up a lot of chess pieces at the beginning between the characters of serenity and mackenzie they're kind of, a, it's a mother and a daughter who are, um, they don't get along very well, but I set up some chess pieces um, and it kind of climax, the first issue climax into a, a huge fight with um, an antagonist. Um, the next issue is going to be the conclusion of that fight, but we also get introduced to two more characters, um, uh, two more characters that are um I guess they're they're from the planet that Serenity and Mackenzie are um, crash landed on, and you'll see. Hopefully, if I if I wrote it well, because um, I know Christian's going to draw it really really well, 
But if I wrote it well, then you'll see um, kind of a imbalance between the characters that were introduced to in issue two and the characters that we are already introduced to in um, issue number one. Um, but I'm really excited about um, those two characters that we're going to introduce because those two, um, I'll just, they're, um, the world that they crash landed on is like a alien um, mystical planet that has magic and um, dragons, but they're also aliens as well. But the characters that we're introduced to, um, they're like, I guess, on the opposite end of what Mackenzie and Serenity, the main characters are. If Mackenzie and Serenity, if they get along really well, or if they don't get along really well, and these two new characters, um, they kind of, um, I guess, counterpoint that. They're very, very much on opposite ends, and we'll see how those two parties um, collide, I guess. Uh-huh. So it's funny that you've mentioned uh, The Last of Us. So two things. Uh-huh. One, I um, would listen to the soundtracks of Last of Us when I was writing my action scenes, because action scenes are, uh-huh. um, try to, like, for me, they're difficult to write is because it's like, how do you paint that picture of an action scene without going too far into detail, but I guess just enough to let the uh, reader know what's going on, but like trying to maintain the momentum. So uh-huh. listening to the soundtracks helped me write my action scenes for my stuff. And two, have you seen the trailer that just came out today? Or no, I saw I saw it on YouTube um, for the H- the series. Yeah. No, I haven't seen it. I'm good. I you reminded me. I saw I saw it while I was at work. Um, but it looks real. I mean, I saw like the little snippet of the HBO um, thing a few months ago or a few weeks ago. Like at the yeah. End. I saw a snippet of it, but it, it actually came up on my phone. Um, and I said, I'm going to watch that later because I can't right now. And I'm glad you reminded me because you absolutely, because I, I need to watch it. But it's one of the, man, The Last of Us broke my heart. Um, if you've never played The Last of Us, get ready to have your heart broken at the beginning of both games. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like the, the clicker, when I heard the sound of the clicker, it was just... Oh. Brought back all that anxiety. I was like, no, no, oh, no. You mean in the new, in the new trailer? In the new trailer, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, oh my god, I gotta, yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go. I, gotta go. <laughs> I, I want to go back. I know, um, you know, they just remade part one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna buy it, and I'm gonna experience it all over again. And um, I got a PlayStation, a PS5. Um, it's been like years since I played part one. And I don't really, I, um, I remember, you know, the major parts like with the giraffe and at the beginning and, you know, the hospital scene at the end. I'm, um, but I'm eager, I'm going to go back and play it. And hopefully I get that same feeling that I had when I initially played it, like in what it came out in like 2013 or something. And then I, I think I played it first in 2017 or 2016, but mm-hmm. then it's, it, that's one of the stories that stuck with me. How did you feel about um, part two? Well, the first part was so frightening that I was like, I can't, I don't think I can do play part two. And so I, I never play, I never play part two, but I've seen a bunch of playthroughs. I've pretty much seen oh, it all, yeah. played all the way through on Twitch. And I'm like, I'm so glad that I didn't, didn't play this game. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so much. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but it's like, it doesn't get better. It just no, it gets worse. <laughs> and I don't it, like that. If, if you are expecting a like a happy ending no i mean it, it, everything gets resolved but it's very it's very much like life that's um it's very much like life you know not everything ends with a happy ending it might um well i mean i guess that's debatable because you know the main character ellie she makes a certain decision at the very end that hopefully brings her you know brings her to Whatever, whatever she's trying to get but man at the but that's the kind of stories I'm actually trying to tell you know not every story needs to have a happy ending I think every story has to be resolved every conflict has eventually has to be resolved but sometimes you know some people get away with certain things you know some people don't forgive other people for some certain things mm-hmm. or some people do forgive people for things that they probably shouldn't forgive them for um that's all like I said that's also the kind when I say I think I said this like four or five minutes ago like I want to make painful stories 
-hmm. that's exactly um what i was talking about um when when i'm when i i guess conceptualized the last uh, not the last of worlds away um and it's all, i only have a a plan for four issues so far but hopefully in those four issues i'll make the readers feel something uh, feel upset at some decisions that some characters make um but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it <laughs> yeah i never thought of it like that that everything was resolved even though it was uh, like it wasn't a happy ending like it was resolved and like it and you know people had answers but it's probably they, not the answers it, that they wanted or not the answers that they wanted yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. probably it's <laughs> probably um they a lot of people would have done the opposite of what Ellie did at the end of part two, um, because the whole game is her about is about getting revenge, and then you know she made a certain decision at the very end um, that a lot of people didn't agree with. Um, but I don't know. That's I think it was great. I know I know um, part two was very polarizing, especially because of what happened at the beginning. Um, but I was a huge fan of it. I'm not gonna lie. I loved. Um, I loved. The last was part. Actually, I love both of them. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see where they go with it. If I'm pretty sure, there's no way that there's not going to be a last was part three. Well, I heard that, and I've seen a couple of, I guess, storyboards or whatever you want to call it, maybe screenshots. Um, that they may be doing like a multiplayer one, but it's not uh -oh. going to be Joel and Ella. It's going to be like a group of people oh. survived, and it's going to be like a multiplayer type of thing. Oh. which I'm interested in because I was like when I'm playing these games I'm like I need help I need somebody <laughs> to help me I can't yeah. do all this I'm running out of cocktails I'm running out of bullets that'll be you interesting know. especially especially if it's play uh, pvp you know if you having like a I guess a group of clickers on this side you can probably bait them towards the enemy group or something uh -huh. that'll be crazy Oh, I didn't hear about that. I gotta go. I gotta do some digging after this. <laughs> That's gonna yeah, be yeah. I would love to play that. But um, back to Worlds Away. So, um, could you elaborate on your career process for Worlds Away? So, like, mm -hmm. when you first got the inspiration to write the story, um, you know, like things like character development and storylines, and even things like world building. Because what you're talking about with the mashup of stuff, it's like, how do you like? how was the world building for you for this story yeah um I tried to um when I came up with it I didn't want I wanted to make a story that would be resolved like a four-ish stories if it ends here then it ends here if um, if I'm lucky enough to continue that process for issue five six seven and eight then then that would be cool I'm, I'm definitely down for that um but when I came up with it, um, I wanted to make a story. It's honestly, it's in a nutshell, it's about my mom. My mom is, um, it's, my mom would literally do anything for me. Shout out to my mom. She's a little Filipino lady. Um, she would literally do anything for her kids. So I kind of took that concept um, and I was inspired by The Last of Us. I was inspired by God of War, this mother, daughter, father, son kind of thing. Um, and I wanted to see if there's something that a mother or what I feel my mother would do um, is kind of is obviously an exaggerated um, version of that. But I literally think my mother would do anything for her kids. Um, and I kind of take that that theme. What would a mother, what would a parent do um, for their kids to ensure their safety, to ensure they make it out of the situation? Um, how far would they go to make that happen? Um, when I when I thought of it, um, I wanted to I wanted to make it a simple plot. Um, I didn't want it to be this huge kind of thing. Um, the whole story is just Serenity and Mackenzie, the main characters, a mother and a daughter, trying to get get off of this planet that they crash landed on. Um, and what I wanted to, the thing that I wanted to drive the story was, you know, their relationship. It's a simple thing. They have a simple objective, get off the planet by any means necessary. And on that planet, there are these mystical creatures. There are these mystical spell binding characters. There's witches, there's, there's wizards, there's um, all these different types of things. 
and that's in contrast to what they have as well. I, I wanted to play with um, sci-fi versus fantasy. Um, I won't, um, when you see it, if you take a look at it, if, um, worldsaway worldsawaycomic.com, if you take a look at it, um, you'll see that the main character is Serenity, who's an intergalactic soldier type, um, and her daughter Mackenzie, they have, the, they have like Iron Man type armor. Um, they're from the, uh, it's like a futuristic universe. They have um, Iron Man type armor. They have uh, laser beams. They have plasma blades, um, and that's in contrast to this planet that they are um, they crash landed on, where there's magic and dragons and all these things. So um, it's a simple plot. Um, you know, I, I start build. I started to build the world um, more as I um, wrote the script, um, or as I wrote the outline. Um, but I just wanted to create a planet that um, is very high fantasy with the contrasting main characters of sci-fi and action. So how difficult was the world building if it was at all? Like what tricks have you learned to help maintain continuity and avoid um, like plot holes? And so like, even like the laws that you came up with, like this is the law here in like, uh, uh, I guess procedures that we have here on this planet, whereas where Serenity came from, from mm -hmm. their planet or the city or whatever it is that they came from, you know, would they have, you know, lasers and armor versus mm -hmm. living or crash landing on a magical planet? Mm -hmm. One of the things that really helped me out, um, and if you are a writer, um, one of the things that I had to learn um, was to get yourself an editor. And shout out to Brittany Matter. Um, she had um, Lucid Dreams that came out recently, but I sent her the um, script to, you know, just look over it, give me some notes, and that's exactly what she was saying. She, she told me, you have to be careful. Look, why is this witch character, why is she pursuing them? What are the rules for her magic, and what are the rules between this and that? Um, and what I wanted to do was um, establish those rules. Um, one of the things that I tried to do was make everything explicit, unless you know, you know I wanted to tease it out. Um, so when you do see this magical character, it's very clear what they want, what they can do, what they, um, what they're trying to achieve. Um, and for this story specifically, again, I wanted to make it a a simple kind of simple plot, um, but everything just being explicitly stated, not literally saying, "Hey." I can shoot um, laser beams or I have a plasma blade. Um, I let the story itself kind of show that. Um, I'll, I'll show that the witch has these spells that can, um, I guess some necromancy can bring the dead from, um, bring back the dead or that she can use ice powers. Um, whatever, whatever we come up with, me and the artist, um, but try to make it explicit. Um, you know, the readers, I'm not going to assume that the readers can't figure everything out. Um, but if it's, if it's something that, you know, that we need to establish, then I try to establish it um, clearly and explicitly. So when you were, I guess, I guess we'll say like the first and even like the second draft, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you just like write out certain scenes and just keep going and he was like oh I'll figure it out afterwards or did you try to concentrate a lot on like the world building and you know how things work before mm -hmm. you send it to the editor and then you went into writing the scenes yeah um I outlined everything um so what I did was all right I told myself we need to get this character from point a to point b we need to establish um we need to establish serenity's powers here and here how can we do that um there was a scene that i had to rewrite um where where uh, where the characters i wanted to show that i guess the characters did not get along mackenzie and um serenity they did not get along they absolutely well mackenzie is not a huge fan of her mother and you know and oh mackenzie yeah mackenzie's not a huge fan of her mother and um serenity is kind of cold and she's kind of heartless towards her daughter. Um, the initial draft was, well, in the outline I said, I right, we need to show that these characters don't get along 
in this from page this to page this. Um, so the initial scene that I wrote was just the two characters talking. Um, and then and then I think I sent it to Devin. Shout out to Devin R. Scott. He has a, um, a Kickstarter out right now. Um, but I think I sent it to Devin. And then he said, I think there's a better way to show that these two characters don't get along. So I, I knew I wanted them to have this conflict in the middle. Um, but it was kind of boring because they were literally just going um, back and forth. So I went back and I rewrote it um, in issue one. So instead of this scene where they're just talking, um, there is an obstacle in the way. And using that obstacle, I was able to show some of their powers as well. There was this huge canyon in between. They needed to get here. Uh, they were here and they needed to get here. Um, so I used that opportunity to say, um, she needs to get across, well, they, those two need to get across this canyon and uh, Serenity jets towards the other side and Mackenzie's not so sure that she can do it. And in that moment, they kind of had that conflict without them just talking. So I kind of established um, what needs to happen without kind of the parts in between are, are fluid. You know, if we need to change a scene, then I can change that scene as long as certain, I guess, character points aren't lost in there. Because again, I, one of the things that I want to do is drive the characters forward. Um, I don't want it just to be action scene on top of action scene. Um, I want it to be, you know, I want it to be, I want characters to feel things. I want the readers to feel um, for these characters. Um, kind of like, you know, like The Last of Us, like God of War. Um, you know, there's these scenes in between, um, but not, a, not it's, there's no wasted space, I don't think, in these games. A lot of, every scene has a specific or every moment has a specific purpose. What do you need to show about this character? What do you need to show about this character? What is, what is um, what are they trying to convey to the reader that's important here? I'm not trying to waste any panels, I'm not trying to waste any um, anything really, just make it, because the readers aren't dumb. No, readers aren't dumb. They, can, they know um, exactly um, what's going on if you convey it well enough. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I asked that question. That's just a question I just randomly asked because the way I write, I kind of just write out a scene because I feel like my characters tell me what is happening mm -hmm. in, in a scene or, you know, what, like if they're arguing or they're, you know, chatting about something and then it eventually it'll lead on to something else and I'll just work it out later. Like, I don't know where this is going, but <laughs> I'll work it out later. And that's what kind of what I tell people sometimes It's like, don't get so hung up on stuff, especially if you're building a world from ground from the ground up where it's like, my mm -hmm. stuff is in the real world where yours is this high fantasy, sci-fi type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So don't try to get so caught up in the details. Just work it out later in the second draft. Just yeah. kind of do what you need to do right now and then work it out later. Absolutely. I um, one That's one, like I said, one of the things that I, I had to learn was, you know, everything can be fluid. Nothing can be set in stone unless you absolutely have to have this scene as, you know, this absolutely has to happen this way for whatever reason. Uh, then I, I would suggest, um, you know, being fluid. Um, like if you need to make a change, um, be open to that change unless it's like pertinent as long as it's not, you know, super important to the story that you're trying to tell. Uh-huh. So how has your experience been searching for collaborators to work with? And how did you know that they were right for Worlds Away? Man, um, <laughs> there's so many great people out there that I, um, before Christian, shout out to Christian Prudessi, the artist on there. Um, there were so many great people that I would say, hey, this would be a great book for this guy um, or this person or this, um, this girl. Um, a lot of them liked my idea, um, but they they just, you know, they were booked because they're so good. Mm -hmm. uh, even Christian, um, he kind of did my story or our story uh, in between um, the other things that he was doing. Um, but that's, but doing the um, Mad Cave Studios thing, I think that gave me a little bit of, um, little bit of an advantage um, because 
I, I, I did kind of put it out there. Hey, I won this, I won this thing. <laughs> you might want to work with me. Um, but, you know, even though I did do that, I, I absolutely, you know, I give them all the credit. They give me Christian, um, Luana, the colorist, Devin, Greed. Um, they give me ideas as well. I say, hey, can you make, I'll, I'll talk to Reed and say, um, can you make this word balloon this color? And Reed will come back to me, hey, man, I don't think this is working. Maybe you might want to rethink it, change it to this. And, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for them because they're, they've one, they've been great to work with, but they know it, they absolutely know what they're doing. Um, they have the mind for that. You know, I can write down Serenity punches somebody hard or something, something crazy like that, so, or something simple. And they and Christian and Luana will turn it into this crazy scene that looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I'm, I'm just thankful for them. Um, but trying to find creators, there's so many out there that, I mean, I wish I could work with all of them. I wish I had the money <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Um, but I'm, on a, I'm currently on a teacher salary, so maybe one day. Um, but but it, it, I mean, Christian has been great. Um, and I can't I couldn't ask for a better collaborator. So shout out to Christian. Love you, dude. So what advice would you offer to other creators you wish someone would have told you when you first started or even during your process of Worlds Away? Mm. Uh, for, for that, I would say, well, one, I, I tried to get away with um, writing without an editor. That's what I kept saying. You know, the first thing that I say, if you if you are um, ch trying to really write, be a creator as a writer, um, one of the best things that you can do is one, find an editor or just have somebody take a look at it. Having a second or third set of eyes on, on your story, it, it can't hurt. You might disagree with that person, but it does give you a perspective on when, what other people might think. Um, even the artist, um, they'll give you a different perspective on um, a certain scene. Christian does the same thing, like, hey, um, we might wanna rethink this. I think it'll look better if we change this scene or this character from moving from here to here, and let's move that person from here to here. And um, I would say, being open to one, being open to criticism, and two, being open to um, changing your story. Um, I don't think anybody ever got away with, you know, telling a great story. I mean, maybe if you have, then you're better than me, but I don't think anyone has um, told a great story on their first draft. Um, so if you can, if you can afford it, or if not, you know, just getting a second eyes on something, would, would do you wonders, especially if you're very passionate about that story. Um, having a second set of eyes would not hurt at all. Uh huh. Yeah, my first draft was a completely different story yep. than what it ended up being. <laughs> and then um, as I started writing more and more, I actually read back something that I wrote um, just a couple of years ago. And I was like, damn, this is really good. <laughs> but I, it's not finished. It's only like four chapters. I'm like, I need this needs to be uh, finished. But it's like I don't write, really want to finish it. <laughs> do you write prose, or are you um, or are you going into comics as well? Oh uh, no, um, actually, I've self-published two urban fantasy books mm -hmm. under the name Chaos Garner. Um, the first one is Unholy. The second one is Unbroken. The third one, I keep telling people it'll be done by the end of next year, but I. Between you and me, I have no idea when it's going to be finished. Um, but um, yeah, like I said, it's completely different. And I actually want, when I finished the third one, I actually am thinking about doing like a graphic novel mm -hmm. of the series, which is something that I'm thinking of now, but that's a world's away. <laughs> no, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's just what I do. Like I said, I'm trying to get back into it. But um. As a great segue, we just talked about it before we started our interview about like being overwhelmed and stuff like that. So just put, putting the putting worlds away to the side, like throughout this whole process um, 
of like trying to maintain your life as, you know, as a teacher and, you know, being with family, being with friends, trying to have a social life, trying to even maintain time for yourself, like throughout this whole thing, did you or do you currently ever get overwhelmed? Um, does it become too much? And how do you typically manage your mental well-being when it does become too much? Um, one of the things that I tell my teacher friends, you know, one, I tell my teacher friends all the time. I think I'm a decent teacher. Um, I know a lot of great teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of great teachers. And I, I, and I, I would say I'm in the middle of it. But I always tell my teacher friends, especially the newer ones who um, year two, year three, you try to do it all. You got to take care of yourself before you take care of anyone else. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it does get to be a lot. Um, I'm in school right now. I'm taking night classes. I have a class tomorrow night. Um, so I'm writing papers. I'm grading papers. I'm trying to put together this Kickstarter. It does become a lot. But once I hit that point um, to say, you know what, I'm done for it tonight, um, the backers will understand if I take one night off. You know, hopefully the backers will understand if I, if this package is, you know, won't arrive until two later, a day later than they expected, two days later than they expected. Because I, I truly believe you're you're not you're no good if you're you know if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not at your best, or if you're not um, I won't say no good, um, but you're not as good as you can be um, if you um, take don't take care of yourself. And that's really hard to do. Um, and a lot of people are are like me and you who, you know, we don't know to do, if we're not doing something, then we feel like we're being uh, uh, unproductive or unproductive, unproductive, unproductive. Um, unproductive. Um, I'm an English teacher, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it happens to me too. I'm like, well, how do you spell this word again? Or, am I <laughs> using this word? I heard it used one time, but I don't, I don't want to use it in a sentence, but like, is it the right, is that how you yep, say this word? <laughs> I'll say, you know what, student, I don't know. I'll get back to you on that question. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think, you know, turning it off when, you know, try to find that point where, you know, what I've had it for tonight. I've done all I can do tonight. Um, I'm going to pack it up and I'll try to get back to it tomorrow um, because it is a lot. Life, <laughs> life can get crazy. Um, just trying to balance everything. Um, but I think one of the things and it's teaching that taught me this um, one because I used to take papers home to grade. I used to take. Um, lessons home to grade uh, or not or to set up Um, but after year five after year six after year seven um, I was kind of like you know what this can wait Um, Mm -hmm. students will be there Um, I've done this for a few years I know exactly I know I know what I can do Um, but this can wait until tomorrow Um, this thing is not worth my mental health for at the moment. Uh, so I would say trying to identify when you know you've reached that point. Um, because if you don't, then you can burn out. And when you burn out, that's not great. Um, no. Burnout is a real thing. They try to go. They, they try to say quiet quitting. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard that term. Um, yeah, it's stupid. Quiet yeah, quitting. I absolutely like, agree. Um, doing, like I'm doing my job. What are you talking about? Because yeah, I'm not going people, above and beyond. To... People think going above. Well, if you believe that, then that's on you. You know, I, I'll absolutely. You know, go ahead. Um, but you know, do your job. Um, it's cool to go above and beyond. Um, but when going above and beyond, um, you know, is that is that the cost of your mental health? Then you might. I'm not a. You know, I'm not a therapist or anything. Uh-huh. But if it costs you your mental health, health, or is at the expense of your your happiness, then you know you might want to reconsider. Yeah, you heard it's a new one. Another thing on the opposite side of that is quiet firing. Is yeah, that, so is that kind of like the same thing, just on the yeah? So it's from it's the employer. So the employer kind of like ices you out. So say like you want like. From I see you from meetings and informing you about stuff, so oh. then it makes it seem like you're not doing 
your job when mm-hmm. you actually are, they're just like kind of ignoring you and like not taking meetings with you or not sending you, like not copying you on certain emails or something like that, just like icing you out in a way. So that way you leave or they'll fire you because you're not fulfilling certain duties, but they've been kind of like icing you out. So you they're kind of like could. cutting your hours a little bit by little. Yeah, doing That's that too. Crazy. Yeah. No, <laughs> I disagree with that. <laughs> I think there's a professional way for you to handle that if you're <laughs> Um, if in that, if you're in that position, if you're a, if you're an employer, don't do that, please, because that's not. <laughs> yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> but um, my last question for you, Damien, is what is your idea of success? So, um, it kind of goes back into um us as creators, if we feel like we're not doing anything, we're unproductive, right? So. I ask that because as creators, if we're not getting regular paychecks from a full-time job or making consistent revenue from our art, we're considered failures or we'll consider ourselves failures. Many of us will put our dreams and projects on a back burner or give them up altogether because this career path can be highly intimidating and competitive. So what is your idea of quote-unquote success? Um, I would say that it's whatever you define it as. That's cliche, obviously. Um, For me specifically, I'm just having fun. You know, I've lost money making worlds away. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I lost, I, 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 um, I paid for the first issue out of pocket, like two, three thousand ish dollars. I had savings. Um, but to me that, you know, seeing that final product, having that actual, um, that issue in your hand, seeing people posted online saying, Hey, I finally got my copy of worlds away. So stoked to, to read it. Personally, you know, that that was that was more than enough mm-hmm. um, for me to call it a success. Um, but I would say that I'm I'm very lucky to be in the position that I'm, I'm, I'm in. You know, like some people don't have the resources that I that I have. Um, some people don't have or they can't use the, that two thousand dollars to spend on, you know, hiring an artist, hiring a colorist. Um, but it's it's whatever you define it as, man. Uh, it's, I know it sounds cliche, but that whole thing, just the whole process, seeing people enjoy it, um, being put in the position to put out a number two, um, maybe a number three, hopefully a number four. Uh-huh. Me, that's um, that's success. If I'm lucky enough to make money off of it one day, then yeah, that would be great. Um, but at the same time, I would say, you know, again, I'm not not everyone is as fortunate as I am. Some people are more fortunate than I am as well. They can they can spend that money and not have to think about it. I, me, this whole time, I was unsure. Should I really do this? I said, can I curse on here? Yeah, you, you can swear. Oh, I said, I said fuck it. Let's do, let, let's do it. <laughs> um, this is not going to happen. Uh, if this is going to happen, then it's going to happen right now. So I decided to pursue it, man. Um, so if you guys are, you know, if you guys are pursuing something or if you're if you're thinking about it, um, then I would say if you have the resources, if you have the ability to do it um, and it's not costing you or if it's not at the expense of something that, you know, is super important. I would say go for it because, you know, you don't want to you don't want to be that person who said what could have been. And that sounds cliche as well. You don't want to add, you don't want to just be like, man, I could have done this when I was so and so, because you know, it's it's tough it's tough to feel that way. I kind of I just got lucky winning the Mad Cave Studios. I know there's a lot of great submissions out there, but that kind of propelled me into this position. I told myself if this is going to happen, then it's going to happen now. Um, but I would say go for it if you can. If not, then you know, especially creating. People get big. People put stories out when they're 40, 50. Um, there is no set timeline either. So if you can't do it now, um, maybe in a few years, maybe in a decade. Um, this isn't like the NFL when you're <laughs> you're retiring at 30. Um, you, you still have time. You absolutely still have time. Yeah. What I try to tell people, I mean, obviously you want to have money for your rent, your mortgage, things, you know, are necessities to live. You know, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, you have to pay for shelter and clean water and stuff like that. But um, outside of the necessities, 
I always try to tell people you'll never have enough money and you'll never have enough time. So I feel like a lot of people wait to have money and they wait to have more time. And it's like, you're not going to have either of those. You just won't. I mean, you won't. I mean, like you spent two, three thousand dollars out of pocket for the first issue. And yeah, you know, you thought when you put that money out, it's like, man, I could have spent that money on something else. But you spent it on a dream of yours. And now you're on, you know, issue two so you're gonna for people listening you're gonna have that like not regret or anything like that but you're thinking man it could have been spent on something else that you know i need right now man like i need new tires i need this for the house i need this for work or for my kids you know partner my dog or whatever it may be you know or i'm too old or it's going to take too much time you know i'm going to lose sleep and it's like I mean, like I said, you're not going to have enough money and you're not going to have enough time. So if it's really that important to you, just go ahead and pursue it and it will be done when it's done. You know, hopefully you'll make your money back eventually at some point. So, but yeah, that's what I just try to tell people when they're on the fence about something. I think we're on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if it's if it's that important to you, absolutely, you should you should pursue it because you might you might end up like like. Me and you, man, because it was absolutely worth it. I'm still in the hole, but you know, I wouldn't. I'm still. I'm. I'm glad I did it. I'll spend that two thousand, three thousand dollars again. No, no hesitation. Yeah. But um, is there anything else that you want to touch on about Words Way as a whole that I may have missed? Um, do you know um what the uh, rewards are or will be for uh for potential backers? Uh, yeah, I know a few of them. Um, this right here, I don't know if this is going to be on video, but um, I got this yeah. shirt, a World's Away shirt. Um, so that will be one of the um, one of the rewards. Um, but I would say also hit up my uh, my newsletter, worldsaway.substack.com. I post a lot of um, concept art, um, some exclusive looks into the issue. Um, so the stuff that I'm putting out now, all the promotional images that I'm putting out now, I show that to the people on um, my my Substack like weeks, months ago. They already saw all this stuff. Um, so if you are curious to see some or have some exclusive looks, um, go to worldsaway.substack.com. Um, but there's a lot of good stuff. Um, I'm kind of I'm adding some stuff to some merch to the the rewards last time i didn't have as many stuff i have i'm have, putting a trading card having a serenity trading card at uh, some and it's it's not a um it's not a stretch goal it's serenity trading card is going to be added to some of the rewards um i'm putting a mini print to the rewards some signed stuff that um that we're creating um but yeah it's going to be it's going to be dope hopefully hopefully we have a few few more backers because um because I'm, I'm really enjoying telling this story and i'm excited to see how it's it's turning out it's shout out to christian shout out to luana shout out to Devin reed shout out to brian hawkins too um love you dude um shout out to everyone who's shout out to jared um everyone who's helped make this happen um mm-hmm. but yeah yeah more and more people are doing trading cards. And I don't know if that's a new thing or people have been doing that, but I like the idea of a trading card. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's a um, uh, shout out to uh, Peck Illustration, Pete Collins. Um, mm-hmm. He's doing the design for it. He's currently doing the design for it. So I should see it in the next couple of days. If this goes on, if this goes out during the, um, the ca- campaign, I think it will. Um, you mm-hmm. guys are, will already see it. Um, but yeah, the trading card, I just stole that, fr- that idea from, from, um, other Kickstarters, man. Cause I'm like, that shit looks cool as hell. Let me try to, try to do that. Um, but hopefully, um, people will dig it. Uh, cause I, I had a great, it was really fun. Come, cause you know, I grew up with Pokemon 1997, 1998. Yeah. I, um, I came up, um, when Pete asked me to give him some information for the card, you know, I came up with some different attacks and <laughs> different defenses. Um, but it was really fun trying to come up with some things that I can add for that trading card. Um, but we'll see how it turns out. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but by the time this goes out, it, hopefully it'll be dope. 
I, I think it, yeah, I think it'd be cool if I don't know if any of them are going to be like holographic, but I think like maybe you just randomly give out holographics and that would I be probably for us too. I promise you that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna say, um uh I don't know if I'm going to do it yet, but I want to. Um when the rewards go out, I'm gonna hopefully put out some random um, holographic ones and if you to try to I guess to incentivize people to get that specific reward mm -hmm. um, and if they get that holographic card then you know they will get a free thing for the next for the next kickstarter if we're lucky enough to have it um, but yeah I had something similar to what you said so shout out to shout out to you man. that's that's dope <laughs> that was really I was thinking about doing something like that um and do you plan on doing any cons um i'm, I'm guessing like next year maybe um, i think you would I do well i think you would do well at like blurred con which is in dc i've been to dc once uh -huh. um last march when did that when does that usually happen um blur con this year I, that was in the it was like july it was like oh. um i think That's it was the, the second week of july this year so it might be around the same time next year. It should be. It's in the summer. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm in education. I can definitely do that. Uh -huh. um, but hopefully at Heroes Con, in Char I'm in Charlotte. Hopefully I can get a table for Heroes Con. Um, the people who run Heroes aren't hard to find my comic book store here. And they do Heroes Con and they're good people. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to see if I can get in on that. They usually have a mini con in um, November, but I haven't heard anything about that. They did a mini con last year. I'm not sure if they're doing it, um, but I've heard of Blurred Con. I didn't know it was in DC, but I would absolutely love to. Um, I'm starting to, I've, I've been, for the past few months, I've been looking into the cost of tabling and all that stuff. And I said, that's not too bad. And I just have to have the stock with me, you know, to try to make something from that. Um, maybe some shirts, some stickers, and actual books. Now that number one is coming out, or is already out, I'll, I can actually have something to put on the table. Um, and hopefully I'll have a few more things. I have a few more projects coming out um, next year. Um, the Mad Cave book I, I, I have coming, hopefully next year. I'm not sure exactly when. Um, then I have a few more um, books I'm working on. That's why I, I was saying, you guys, um, if, it, if it is something that you're passionate about, um, it could blossom into something beautiful, man. Now that I have Worlds Away out, you know, all these other things are happening because of it. So I think it's a, going back to what we were talking about, is a, uh, it's definitely worth it if you have the stuff. Now, hopefully I'll have some stuff to put on the table on some of these cons um, coming up. Yeah, you'll definitely have some stuff. And just to piggyback off of what you just said, I've noticed that when I make a decision about something to pursue something or to even end something, other things start to happen. So I feel like a big part of the reason why people may feel like they're in limbo with something or they're having a difficult time with something is that they haven't made a decision yet. Mm -hmm. So things are lined up for you already that you are obviously unaware of, but you have to make a decision first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me even just starting the podcast, not really knowing how to even do anything like anything like this, right? And then eventually I started learning stuff and then all these other opportunities started popping up, you know, stuff that's been happening for years that I didn't even, I wasn't never aware of and people that I started connecting with and networking with, you know, again, making that decision to put myself out there to talk to people, these strangers really, about the show and what I do and what I what I'm willing to do, they become more uh, let's just say susceptible to it and start reaching out to me, and then things just kind of like started snowballing in a positive way. So yeah, just like you got to make that decision because then, like you know, you're doing cons now and you're working on your second issue and things with Mad Cave and. Who else knows what's going to happen with this? All because you finally made the decision to pursue a lifelong dream. Absolutely. Um, it's scary. It's definitely scary. The mm -hmm. first step is definitely scary. 
Um, but once you see that there's some solid ground under that first step, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, once you get the ball rolling, like you said, anything can happen, man. But it's 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 definitely scary to pursue that one thing, to make that decision, like you said. But you never know, you guys. Um, it, might, it might be worth it. Um, odds are it'll be worth it. So even though it is a scary process, um, even though, you know, but that's life, too. Um, I'm, I'm 31 years old and I have no idea. Guys, I'm 31 and I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually 31 as well. And I'm like, I don't people ask me about something. I was like, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just doing it and I'm just gonna see where it goes. You know, I think that's a that's a good part of life is knowing it's like you don't want to put yourself in position positions where you're in danger, but at the same time, it's like you have you're gonna to have to learn how to dig yourself out of stuff either to learn how to stop digging or knowing when to like leave a situation or how to work your way out of stuff. That's kind of like how you learn. So I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out at some point. Oh, it's cliche, but you learn way more from your mistakes than, you know, than how, when you get it right, you yeah. learn way more. That's, and that's something that I tell my students too. I mean, it's okay to get something wrong. It's, you know, that's part of the process. Um, but it's, you know, that's that's just life, man. Not everyone knows what they're doing. I'm pretty sure even the even the president, you know, has no idea. They're just uh, they're they're figuring it out as they go along. That's that's just life, you know. When we were growing up, we thought the adults had everything figured out. Uh, no, not quite, not quite. But but that that's what it is, man. That's fake it not fake it till you make it I mean sometimes you fake it till you make it but you know that's just part of life figuring it out um as you go yeah exactly well all right I want to thank the comic creator of the world's away sci-fi comic sci-fi fantasy comic series Damien Beckton for joining us here today to promote the kickstarter for the comics second issue I highly recommend our listeners to give Worlds Away Kickstarter a look, share, and back if they can. All of Damien's socials, newsletter, and Kickstarter will be listed in this episode's details for those who are interested. Again, I am K.S. Garner, and you've been listening to the Solo Nerdbook Podcast. Thank you. <laughs>